Hey guys, Max Techish here. So today I'm going to show you how to install a Tekkit Classic server and to get it running, but on an Ubuntu OS. Ubuntu is one of the newest Linux distros. It is primarily used for people who have like server computers like me who want to run a very dedicated server or several servers. Uh, it's a bit complicated for people who aren't familiar with it as it's completely terminal based. You can install stuff for web GUI, GUI, whatever you want to call it, but this is going to be a tutorial for the terminal, just the terminal. So you want to open up your SSH, if you don't know what that is, I can make another video about it. It's just a headless client that allows you to access it without like a second keyboard or monitor, or you want direct access to it, okay? So I use SSH using PuTTY and connect to it. You just want to sign in, whether you're using this or direct. So our first step is going to be making the uh, the server directory. Now to do that, you want to type sudo make directory mkdir, and then the location and name of your folder. So mine's going to be techit server, and I'm putting it in the root folder, the main home folder. Enter, put in your password, done. Okay, now you want to switch to that folder using cd slash the name of your server folder. Okay, now once you're here, there's going to be two ways of doing this. If you're using SSH, this will be the first way. This will be um, the main way to do it. If you're using direct, you're going to have to copy the whole link to the server download. So if you're using SSH, come to this website the link will be in the description right click on the server download button and click copy link address now you want to come back to your SSH window click it left click it first to make it active type sudo wget then just right click once and that'll paste it automatically then you hit enter and it'll download that zip now if you are using a direct as in you, you know, the keyboard is hooked directly to the server and you're directly looking at the monitor. You're going to have to come back here, copy the link address, and then what I do is I paste it up here so it stays. And then you're going to have to individually type out that entire IP. So you would do sudo wget http servers blah 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 so you'd have to individually type that whole thing okay your next step is going to be unzipping the folder that you just downloaded so to do that you're going to want to type sudo unzip and then the folder name so the folder name for the link i just gave you is take it with a capital t underscore server with a capital s underscore 3.1.2 dot zip. I want to hit enter and it may make you type the password or not. And once you've done that, you're done. It's unzipped. So your next step is going to be running the server. So to do that, you're going to want to type sudo chmod chmod however you want to pronounce it plus sign lowercase x launch dot sh now what that does is it makes the la the launcher which is launched on sh it, it, like executable it makes you able to run it. otherwise if you try to run it without doing this step it'll literally just say um, no something not found executable not found or something can't launch it once you do this you want to type sudo dot slash forward slash that is launch if i can spell dot sh and that will start the server now as soon as it's generated its world you know its first world you don't want to stop it any because you got to configure some things obviously so 
So you stop it by typing stop. And then it's done. Now to edit certain things, uh, you're going to use the nano. So to get a list to see what's in the folder, you just want to type ls. And so that'll, see, that'll show you all the things that are in the folder. The main things you'll be messing with are the plugins and the server.properties. So to set up the server.properties, you want to type sudo nano server.properties. And that'll bring you to this. This is where you can change all your settings, max players. Max players all depends off your RAM and internet speed. I have 70 megabit, so and 20 gigs of RAM. So really, I can comfortably run quite a bit. Um, I, you can't, can't go too extreme. It's also on your processor. Um, but RAM and internet speeds are a major part of it. So, you know, whatever, there's charts, figure out. If you have 5 gigs of RAM, then I probably wouldn't recommend more than 10 people. But since I have, and I'm going to allocate right around 17 gigs for the server max, uh, I'm going to put right around 150. And you can change this, obviously. This is uh, the M M MOTD message of the day. Is your... It'll pop up whenever you type in the server if you're not already familiar with that you just go through here and change your settings now one setting you have to change is your server IP so let's say you don't know that for your your Ubuntu system your Ubuntu server that is um, which can be a bit confusing all you want to do is type if config and find whatever internet source you're using. This is a lot harder if you're using wireless, so I'd recommend Ethernet. Otherwise, you can throw a bunch of stuff off. Um, you want to find whatever one of these connections has your IP4 address. So this is my IP4 address, and that's the one I'm going to want to put into the server config. So we'll go back to the server config, sudo nano server.properties. Then we're going to want to go down to server IP. Just use your arrow keys to navigate. Then you're going to want to put in that IP. Now you can change your port. Um, I also run a Minecraft standard server. So normally I would change this. But for the demonstration of this video, I'm going to leave it the same. Um, you want to allow flight because of uh, like the wolf ring and stuff like that. Well that'll cause an issue where it'll kick them for flying. Query, um, you, you wanna change that to true if you plan on putting the server on any type of website that allows it to get information. And you can just go through here and change some things that you want. That's mainly uh, all the things that you absolutely need to do, the, you know, mainly the IP and the port. Um, I have a video on port forwarding, so go check that one out. Pretty simple. Now to save, you want to type control at the same time, control X, and you want to hit Y, then you want to hit enter. Simple as that. Now, you want to run it again, which is sudo dot forward slash launch dot sh. Now you want to go to multiplayer. You can do direct connect or add server. I'll add server. I'll just call this mine. Then once you're done, you want to put in the IP address of the server computer or your system, which would be 192.168.0.30 for me, anyways. And the port. And there you go. It's on. You join it here we are now depending on your server stats you can completely change how it performs um, first thing you probably want to do is you want to come over here and op yourself
and then you have full control over your super. Now, if you want to allocate more RAM to the server, for instance, um, what you want you're going to want to do is you're going to want to edit that launch. So you're going to want to go to sudo nano launch dot sh, and right here, there's two numbers. This is the least amount of RAM you want to allocate, and this is the most. So I'm going to allocate right around 17, and I don't want that to drop below 15. So once you change that, you want to do control X, Y, enter. And it's as simple as that. It'll boot up using whatever amount of RAM you set. All right, guys, uh, one more thing before leaving. Um, if you're not familiar with SSH, one of the things about it are that whatever happens in that window stays in that window and will leave when you close that window. So, for instance, the server, which is being ran in this window, if I were to close it out, the server closes. So the server is no longer running. And of course, you don't want that window open. The whole purpose of having a separate you know, server computer is so you don't have to have stuff open on your normal computer. So what you want to do is reopen this. Reconnect to your server, and this is causing an issue. Now, once you're here, you want to type tmux, T-M-U-X. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to open up like a virtual window. Um, this window will stay running in the background of the server regardless of what you do with the window. So, now that you've done this, you want to navigate to your server folder. So, cd forward slash whatever the name of your server is. Then relaunch the server using sudo dot forward slash launch dot sh password. Okay, now that's booted up. Now, in order to leave this window, you have to do this. You want to hit control B at the same time and then D. There'll be no indicators other than it just closing out so that's it now when you're ready to go back to that window you want to type tmux attach and there it is so to leave control b and then d as in control plus b and then d alone don't hit control with d just d and you can safely close this out and it'll continue running. And to show you, now that I've completely closed this out, and reconnect again. Oh, might have mistyped that. Tmux, attach, and there it is. So control B, B, done and besides plugins which i'll cover in our next video which can be complicated on ubuntu but you just gotta take it a step at a time that is pretty much it for setting up a server i have a video for port forwarding and i might release a video on how to set a static ip and a dns so instead of uh, someone connecting to your external ip they can type they can just type in your dns so thanks guys, don't forget to like and comment, subscribe if you want, and I'd really appreciate it.